Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to go over how to access your DVR server from a remote location. Uh, if, if you follow the instructions in the tutorial that goes over the system setup and network setup screen, uh, you'll have already set up the, the port forwarding on your router so that uh, you'll be able to connect from a remote location. Uh, in order to determine what IP address to type in, uh, you can go to a website called whatsmyip.org. That will give you the public IP address of your DVR server. So if you're, if you're on the DVR server, you can just you can launch Internet Explorer and there's a website called what's my IP dot org and in the page that comes up the DVR servers IP address will pop up at the top of the page and it will come up just like that and this is the address that you would use when you're going when, when, when you're trying to log in from a computer that is not on the same network as the DVR server so perhaps your server is is located in your office you leave your office, you go home, and you want to log in remotely to see some of the live footage to see what's going on in the office, you would use this IP address to log in. Um, as stated previously, if you're on the same network and you want to log in from just another computer that's on the same network, instead of using the public IP address of the DVR server, you would use the private IP address. To obtain that, you can go to Start, Run, type CMD, click OK, then type IP config, and then your private IP address is going to be here under IP address. So if you're on the same network, you would use this address to access the DVR server. OK. At this point, we can go ahead and prepare to, to log into the server. The first thing that you need to do before this is going to work properly, you have to go to Tools, Internet Options, then click the Security tab, and then click Custom Level. And then scroll down until you see a heading called ActiveX Controls and Plugins. You need to, you need to enable all of these. All, the, all of the controls under that heading, make sure that all of them are enabled. Mine are all enabled because I've already done this previously, but by default, all of them are not going to be enabled. So make sure that all of the ActiveX controls and plugins under that heading are enabled. Normally, uh, the next heading underneath ActiveX controls and plugins is downloads. So once you reach downloads, you know that you've pretty much reached the end of you've reached the end of all the ActiveX controls, and you know that you've enabled all of them. Once you've done that, you click OK, and you may have to hit Apply. Mine is grayed out because I didn't change any settings, and then click OK again. At this point, you should be able to type in the IP address and it'll come up and you can you can log into the server using any of the usernames and password combinations that you created for any of the accounts on the on the system so I'll go ahead and log in and you click this after you type in the username and password you click this login button here and it logs me into the system what you need to do if you want to view more than four screens, um, you're going to need to log out because by default it will only show four screens. Well, it'll, it'll only show the first four screens. So if you want to see more than that, you have to click log out, then click the screen configuration you want. And in this case, I'm going to change this to the nine screen and then log in again and now it shows multiple screens it'll show nine screens 
that's important to keep in mind because sometimes, you know, you'll log in, you only see four screens, and you'll try and maybe click on one of these down here, and it won't go past four. So you got to make sure that if you want to see more than four screens initially, um, you have to log out then click the desired screen configuration and log in again before it'll take effect. And that's all you need to do to view live video. And you can double click on any of these to enlarge them. And if any of these are displaying live footage from a PTZ camera, you just select the, the particular square and then you can use the PTZ controls here to control the PTZ camera. And and that's it for viewing live video. Okay, to play back recorded footage, uh, we can click the playback button here at the bottom. And you can select you can select a different square and stream video from a particular date and time to that square. For instance, we're going to select this first square here, choose camera 5, and then we're going to go to 1455. It's going to start playing back on from the footage from April 12th at 2:55 p.m. Now we can go to the second square here, choose camera 5, and we can choose a different date. We'll choose the 11th. And we'll start playback from 4.58. And it'll start, play, it'll start playing back that footage there. You can do this for any camera. This means you can display, you can display footage from the same camera at different times on different dates. Uh, you can also display playback from different cameras. Uh, it's up to you what you what you want to stream to each one of these squares. You can choose the camera, you can choose the date, the camera, and the time that you want to stream to this particular to, to each square that you select. And that's it. You can double click on any square to enlarge it. And if you decide, well, I don't I no longer want this particular I no longer want this footage streamed to this particular square. You just click stop down here and then it'll stop. It'll stop that that particular stream of footage and then you can maybe you can go in here and select a different camera, a different date. I'm going to jump to the 13th and and now we're streaming we're streaming video from today's date at 6:27 a.m. for a camera for this particular camera for camera one so that's that's how you that's how you log in remotely and view live video and and also how to view video footage that's been previously recorded